All right, so this is the heart. And the first thing that you'll see is this is anterior. So this is representing sitting in someone. So this is my right and this is my left because you're always looking at that individual. So this represents the apex of the heart and the base is what kind of sits on the diaphragm. So the base is posterior and it's a little more flatter. Now each model looks different, just like if we were to look at each one of our hearts inside, we'd all look slightly different. So this is the apex on this one and you can see the flatter part for the base on this. So the heart kind of sits like this on the diaphragm with the base on the diaphragm. So the prominent layers that you could see on here is that the pericardium is off. If the pericardium was covering this model, we wouldn't be able to see all these vessels. So the first layer that we're able to visualize is the myocardium, which represents the muscle of the heart, okay? So as a, a tidbit first, atria or chambers up top and ventricles are the bottom or the inferior. So in order for us to talk about how blood flows through, that's the easiest way for you to start looking at the parts of the heart as well. So initially, we get into the heart via the superior vena cava, the inferior vena cava, and drops down into what is known as the right atrium. the right atrium. Also, the myocardium of the heart fills into the right atrium as well, and it's not represented here, but there's the coronary sinus also draining into this right atrium. It goes through this first valve, and this valve is known as an atrioventricular valve, AV valve, because it's a cusp, and a cusp, it looks like almost like a, a funnel, where the bottom of the funnel is held together by chordae tendinae, and the chordae tendinae are anchored to extensions of the chamber below called papillary muscle, okay? So this first cusp that we see on the right side is known as the tricuspid valve. So in your blood flow, you ride your tricycle before you ride your bicycle, which is on the other side. So tricuspid is the entire valve, chordae tendinae, and papillary muscle. So we'll see differences in the myocardium within, right? And you wanna think of the inner layer of these chambers as the endocardium. So the papillary muscles are just projections with that endocardium on it, okay? Separating the lower chambers and the upper chambers is the septum that we have here. So if this is atria, this is ventricle down here, and then this is the interventricular septum, in between ventricles septum or division. If I were to go up here, it's a little bit thinner, but that's the intraatrial septum, same verbiage. And this is all the muscle still, so it's still the myocardium. Okay, so we're gonna go blood flow. If we're on the right side, what type of blood is in there? It's gonna be deoxygenated blood. So it's typically on a model or a picture represented as blue blood right there. And that goes through this kind of valve now, which are the one of the exit valves of the heart. So this one is called a semilunar valve, and this is going to the lungs. So this is the pulmonary semilunar valve, which enters into the pulmonary trunk. The pulmonary trunk then divides into left pulmonary artery and right pulmonary artery that we can see here. So on either side would be my lungs. I fill up with oxygen, and then I'm going to come back via veins. So arteries are away from the heart and veins are towards the heart. So these veins, I have two on either side. So these are my right pulmonary veins 
and my left pulmonary veins. So those two drain into this side now of the heart, which is the left atrium. So the left atrium fills, and as it's filling, this cusp is closed, which is the bicuspid valve. That one actually has a different name as well, called mitral valve. And same chordae tendine, same papillary muscle that we see in here. And this is the left ventricle. The left ventricle has the thickest myocardium because this one has the oxygenated blood and it's gotta go to the most pressurized vessel that we have in the body called the aorta. And the aorta's job is to drop off that oxygen everywhere. So it's going through one of the exit valves, but this is a semilunar valve because it's exit, and it's the aortic semilunar valve, and it's gonna go through the aorta. This is called the ascending aorta, the arch of the aorta, and then the descending aorta. So on pictures and sometimes models, it'll look like it's an actual arch this way, but it's really anterior to posterior. So this one continues on, and once it pierces the diaphragm, it's called the abdominal aorta. So it's behind um, the heart itself, and it travels all the way down and then branches, and we have the next chapter to look forward to all that. So now I'm gonna tell you some of the other structures that we see here and what they're called. So we got the ventricles down and we got the atria down. There is a ligament here that <clears throat> acts as a duct in the fetus because we are bypassing the lungs in fetal circulation. You know, we don't have to do that. Instead, it has circulation through via the placenta. So once that closes up, this ligament and then this hole that used to be in the right atrium be change names. So this was called the ductus arteriosus and it now it after birth, if everything is functioning properly and you don't need to send that baby in a NICU, then it's called ligamentum arteriosum. That makes sense, ligament, because it's white. Arteriosum, because it's the aorta, which is an artery. So it kind of holds down the aorta because it's the highest pressurized vessel to the pulmonary trunk, so it's not flapping anywhere. Now this one represents foramen ovale. So in the fetus, both unoxygenated, deoxygenated and oxygenated blood mix in the fetus. And I don't know if you've heard some people say that they have a hole in their heart or they were born with a hole in their heart. This is the one that they're talking about. We all had that hole in the heart, but it turned out to be closed up as soon as we get our lungs working. It typically closes up and then becomes called fossa ovalis. Okay? And Okay, so on the surface of the heart, you'll see the coronary arteries and the veins. And there are some prominent structures and features of the heart here. The first thing that you'll see is two extensions of the atria. They, are, they look like ears. If we were to put ears on a heart, this is where they would be, right? On the lateral side. So this is known as the right auricle, not like matrix auricle, but A-U-R. So the term for ear. So right oracle, left oracle. And what they really are is an extension. So if blood coming back to the heart tends to be extra volume, I can expand this chamber a little bit. And that's what those ears do, okay? Another thing that you'll see is this area represents the interventricular um, septum. So this is like the dip that you'd see in here, right? So let's talk about the coronary arteries and veins. Because the coronary arteries and veins are talking about supplying the heart itself with the blood and then coming back to the heart to get reoxygenated, you know, through the blood flow that we just talked about, this is the right coronary artery 
and this is the left coronary artery. This one right here that branches kind of at the margin is known as the marginal artery. And then this one is called the anterior interventricular artery. If I follow this guy all the way back to the posterior, it's the same name. I can do it on this part because so this is the anterior interventricular artery. I'm gonna turn this guy around and it's gonna be called the posterior interventricular artery. Now it kind of combines with a bunch of them. So these are called anastomoses, which means branches. So um, a great example of an anastomosis is 285 is a circular highway, right? But if you get off an exit, you're going or branching off that main circulation. And then you come right back onto 285, which is a big circle. So this big circle are the right and left coronary arteries. Anything that branch off of it is our exits. And then with the venous system, we come back on the exit, the return way. So this one that's going around from the left coronary artery to the back, on the posterior side, it's called the circumflex artery. So I'll do those arteries again. Right coronary, left coronary, circumflex, marginal, anterior interventricular, posterior interventricular artery. So one of the things that you could see, especially on this heart model here, is the differences in the projection of that endocardium. So the prominent ones we already talked about being the papillary muscle, but everything that you see here is known as trabeculae carne, which is very um, specific structure. And trabeculae or trabeculations is something that we witnessed in bone also in spongy bone and we kind of looked at it um, before and it's the same sort of like holes presentation. So papillary muscle, trabeculae carne, and in the atria, we don't have either of those. We have what's known as pectinate muscle. So pectinate are found in the atria.